Now, if you have a homeschooler in the house, your kitchen table probably looks a little bit like this one. All this clutter. It's all good stuff. All good stuff. It's on our kitchen table. I think we're going to take this and we're going to put it right here. But what's the most important part of a fold up wall hanging desk? To me, it's going to be the actual desktop. What is it going to look like? How big is it going to be? As big as a you know wall size poster? And I think that's what I'm going to aim for. That's a 7 8 inch uh, poplar. And then I'm going to build the frame and everything else around the size of that tabletop. That's my game plan. I'm going to stick to it. First things first, rip down these boards. Now, I don't have a joiner or a planer, so I'm going to get that as tight as possible on the table saw here. And I like to get one cut to length, and then I set up a, a little jig here to get the rest of them the exact same length. And before I get my biscuit joiner going here, I'm going to mark the same line on all of the planks to get the biscuit joiner lined up exactly. I don't like to build things that are unstable. I like to build things that are going to work. You don't have to worry about it injuring or breaking or something. So I went down to a smaller desktop. Essentially just take, took one of the slats out. I have it, this is all dry fit here. I'm excited because that means when I get this thing glued, I'm committing to the actual size of the thing. Now when you're biscuit joining, wood glue is your friend. Plenty of wood glue spilling out of these biscuits as they come together. And then when you actually put it together and get the clamps on it, that glue should be spilling out. And then you do a little cleanup and it's right on time. I like to put a little scrap wood in between my clamps and my actual wood pieces. That way it keeps me from scarring it up. Leave it overnight, open it up, scrape off all the excess with a five and one. If I'm gonna build it, I might as well build it to the six inches off the wall I was considering to begin with. That might be a little bit far off the wall. I mean, this is six and a half inches. That's sticking out pretty far. That means it'll be plenty functional on the inside. Lots of room. And the way I see it, I rip this down to six inches, build the frame, dry fit it, if I'm not happy, if it's going to stick out too far, rip another inch off. So I'm going to rip down this poplar at seven eighths inches down to six inch width. This is my box here. This will be the frame that sits on the wall. And the other side of that will be the front face of this onto the routing of the back edge of this for the panel and in the sides for the shelving. Five inch or so. Zero, zero. In the back of this thing, it's got two plugs. So you plug in the router and you plug in your vacuum. Once that's plugged in, you turn it on and it turns both of them on at the same time. This is my quarter inch birch back panel that's gonna be on the back of this desk. So the new test piece, this is now firewood. It's uh, perfectly over the back panel. Start off with running these through first, the end piece of this. Now I like to make two passes through the router with this. Probably could use to actually mount the router to the table, but it's my table, so what am I gonna do? Long end pieces, I wanted to keep short by about an inch so that I wouldn't go through the end of it. That way it would get plenty of room for the back panel to set within the quarter inch route. Now to do that, I would just push the end in instead of taking it all the way from the end. I'd push it in, in about an inch from the actual cut line. I ran this side through, a little bit longer past this side. You'll never see that in the front, but at least it'll give me plenty of room to get a, cool, a complete 90 degree angle out of the back panel on there. It is half inch. The difference between cutting half inch and three quarter inch on the, on the table saw, extraordinary. Half inch goes through like butter. So this should be my shelf.
Now I could have done a half inch on either side cut to make this for a different joint, but I wanted a full board to stick out on either side. So I biscuit jointed it and I think it held it pretty tight in. One thing about the biscuits is that it gives you a little bit of latitude left to right to wiggle around a little bit and get that joint right where you want it. Plus you're filling it with a ton of glue and it makes it for a really sturdy edge. The Type Bond 3 wood glue is for exterior and interior gigs, so it is a really tight bond. And the thing about it is that it will dry fairly quick, so as I'm working around this, I'm filling it with a ton of glue, and then I'm making sure to wipe off the excess so I don't get it on my beautiful table. Biscuit joined around the edges, shelf should be level. It's going to have a little bit of flinginess, but I'm going to put a, a runner across the top. It's essentially going to make it an L bracket. It's going to be stable and sturdy. I like that. This hanging wall desk is coming together for my daughter. It's going to be awesome. She's going to love to put her stuff in there. My wife's going to love to have her stuff off of the table. Blue's running out of it. This side too. Anyhow, subscribe is always an option. Hammer that like button if you're into this stuff. When you don't have a plan, you're going off something in your head. There really is no, well, this is the next step. It's pretty much just, well, what can we do next in order to get it to the next step? Like, like so. Sometimes you get wacky ideas, just dust. I'm gonna run a cord through this. We'll have this little entryway for a cable to go through. Now I decided to put the back panel on at this point because that would establish that it was going to be really sturdy. It will keep it square. And ultimately all that wood glue on there was going to make the thing really tight. I probably should have clamped the board down before I made the first cut. You probably saw it move. Therefore I had to trim a little bit off to get it to fit right in. Put two of these bad boys together. And I really love the grain on this. Ooh, that's actually better. I'll smudge this around a bit. Now this thing is going to be hanging off the studs and I want it really sturdy so I decided to take two half inch pieces of poplar, glue them together in order to put that final piece on the back where it was going to have a lag screw put in and hold to the studs. There really is no way to clamp this whole piece down so I just used some weights to hold it down against the back so that it really got a good seal on the back there and hold the whole thing together with that Type Bond 3. Guys if you haven't subscribed yet, I don't know what you're doing, take a look at the like button, hammer it one time, helps me get along. Okay, I do have this ugly thing right there and that's gonna really show, but it's gonna remind me that I'm human and that's okay. That's gonna fit in there nicely. I can't give up on this grain. Look at how awesome that grain is. I know it's two different colors on the end there, but I still wanted to fill in the crease with some of the wood putty. And as you know, the amount of sanding in this type of project is always understated. I got tons of wood glue on this ledger because this is what's going to be holding up most of the weight to the wall. And you got to be careful with these types of hammers because you will get black marks on it. In a perfect world, I would have made this half inch shorter. And then I would have put this on the front to make a nice flat face. But I'm an idiot. So instead, I'm going to put this right here, clamp it down. I did make this a half inch thinner to match the width of this. So half inch thinner because of the width of this. So at least that's symmetrical. I cut a couple of spacers to fit behind the runner to keep it exactly spaced where I wanted it so that when I clamped it down, it wouldn't move out of place. This whole piece doesn't have any hardware in it. It's just all wood glue. And with the right joining, it's actually gonna create a super tight bond. Sorry for the pun. I use a spacer here to keep my glue line in place all the way down. And once I get it all in there, I'll take those spacers out and then apply one million clamps in order to keep it in place. Leave it overnight, come back, take these things off, and 
see what we've got. I wanted to do the prep work for the hinges first before I got on to the rest of it. So I did chisel out the area for the depth of the hinges to fit in there nice and tight. Little shout out to San Marcos Hardwoods who recommended this Timber Mate putty and it is malleable, very nice to work with, better than the Minwax version that I'd used before and it is actually a gem. It goes on really nice, it's workable, it doesn't gum up really fast like other models and it sands really easily. Got to be sure to get all the dust out of it before you actually apply that putty because you don't want it messing around. And with more putty comes more sanding, of course. But there were a lot of corners and edges in here that I really wanted to seal up nice so that when I stained it, it covered it up really clean. Again, sanding can't be said enough. So much sanding going on in these types of projects. To get as tight as possible in the joints and the butt ends of this thing, I did use the oscillating tool with the sanding attachment to it. You can get these sanding pads at any local hardware store and attach on there via Velcro. I added a little white gaffer's tape to keep them smudging up the corners. I decided to add a light bar that would swing in and out so that it can have some light over the desk. What I don't want to do is stall up on this project because I'm scared of the the sanding and how it's going to turn out or I'm scared of the stain and how it's going to turn out. I want to get through this project, finish it up. Uh, it's like they, what they say in screenwriting. Don't get it right, get it written and try to fix it best you can as you get going. I like to put the cabinet on it, some spare blocks so I can reach the very corners on the bottom with the stain. Microfiber pillowcases work really great for adding stain. Obviously before I stain it, I'm going to hit it with some of this pre-stained wood conditioner by Minwax. You can get any other kind, I guess, but this is what they had. Uh, I'm going to wipe that down and leave it for about a half an hour before I get onto this stain. For the stain, I am going to try a couple of different options. One, I've got dark walnut. I've got a couple of dark walnuts from previous projects. So I can mix this together. I'll be fine. Same call number on there. But I also have some ebony. Some ebony. This is uh, pretty dark. Now, it's not going to sink in and look like that. It's not just, just doesn't do that. It doesn't sink in that much, even no matter how long you sit it on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a couple of test pieces or one test piece and I'm going to put some of the dark walnut on this side, some of the ebony on this side. I want to get the sediment out of the bottom and mix it up with the rest of the juices. Dip the, uh, the old raggy poo in there. Oh, I likey, likey. Oh, you guys. I think dark walnut is the play. That poplar is just soaking it up. It looks really good, actually. That is delicious. Just because we have the ebony out, let's go ahead and taste that a little bit. Oh, you could just hear the freshness come out of that. It's been on the shelf for probably... 45 years just kidding but at least a couple of, ooh you just dip it in there it's like chili again i didn't condition this wood either so it might be a little bit more splotchy ebony dark walnut ebony dark walnut i really like the dark walnut quite a bit let's ask the wife the dark walnut is an exact match to our floor pretty much ebony is just not quite there it's nice but this has a lot more character on it i think the dark walnut is going on that. That's too big. That's too big. Get a small one. There we go. I'm at the same time get all the dust off this thing. I did vacuum it, but let's just see how this goes. Now I've not used wood conditioner a lot in the past, but I did want to make sure this stain went on as smooth as possible without as many splotchy sparks, especially considering there was a lot of wood glue that I couldn't quite reach in the edges and the corners with this. After adding the wood conditioner, I'm feeling pretty good about it, but I will tell you that I'm gonna see those discrepancies 
And as a man with a tiny bit of OCD, I got it's gonna drive me nuts. But you don't do woodworking if you can't handle a little bit of discrepancy. That's my opinion, and that's what I've noticed. But I think that once the, the stain gets on this thing, it gets on the wall, it's being used. That's the critical element. It's not just being made, it's being used. And that's where you get the reward. All right, I got two rags, one for applying, one for wiping off. This I've already mixed up as you've seen. I got half a can here. I think that's gonna be plenty to cover this thing. It's been sitting for 10 minutes now. I get a lot of that, I get rocking. I like to use a rag to apply the stain because I feel like I have more control over where it goes and how much stays on there. The first coat is always a good example of when and how you've messed up the actual wood glue portion of it. And you can see where the discrepancies are coming in really quick. Thankfully, I didn't find too much that was really bothersome. You'll see here in a minute after I get the stain on the desktop once that I actually removed one of the glue splotches, two of the glue splotches later on after the stain was on there. And that's all right. Just sand it down real well and get a lot of uh, conditioner and stain on it to cover it up. Can't even tell. For this splotch right here, I used a little 100 grit paper by hand. Got underneath the stain, got underneath the wood glue that was left on there, vacuumed it up, hit a little with a more wood conditioner, and then some stain, and you can't even tell it looks much nicer after it's done. There's another one that's really bothering me, this drip all the way down the side. I don't know how I missed it. But after some uh, elbow grease, some wood conditioner, a little bit of stain on there, much nicer. You couldn't even tell it was there. The second coat, after leaving the first one for an hour or two, went on really nice and that's when you can start to see the final color starting to really come through there and i love the dark walnut choice it's really looking good coming together i probably used the entire stack of microfiber cloths in order to get it done by the time this whole thing was over attaching this light bar was a really great choice because it did add a light source without having to keep a lamp on the actual desk and I wanted it to be the width of the light bar that I bought. Description will have the link to the light bar itself. Whenever I'm actually gonna drill into the wood, I like to use a spring punch because I want to make sure that the line is exactly where it should be. I give two. That gives me a nice deep set there to get started. I can't drill it, so I'm just going to try to tap this in. I'm just going to work that out. So now I've got a little bit of a pre-drill. Ooh, that's silky looking. Silky and milky! The can says you need three coats of this business, although I'm not convinced. A little build up at the end there. Wow, that is really something nice. What I've noticed with this stuff is you don't need to be worried about the brush strokes. They're going to settle in. Inside, outside, this side, that side. You want to use a really good clear coat on this thing because it's what's going to keep everything safe in the wood for years to come. That is one full coat on one side of the desktop, on one side of the light bar, and on all of the sides of this. Two hours, we get one more coat on this, maybe two, depending on how the shine we like. And then I'm gonna hit it with some 220 in between. Well, I'll give it three. They're all gonna get three, okay? They'll get three! Well, you wanna just go. You wanna just go and get it done, right? But I think three coats would be really good because this is gonna get a lot of use, especially on the desktop. And slamming books and stuff in and out of this thing. Let dry two hours and lightly sand entire surface with sandpaper 220 grit. I did end up putting three total coats on the desktop, but two on the cabinet itself. What I really love about this is that after three coats, that Minwax is doing a really shiny job. The character on these things, whether I created that or that was there, I think I created that, but that looks really cool, I like it. The seams are really shut down, really nice. This thing is beautiful on this side. Guys, if you like this kind of content, do me a favor. Hammer that like button, it's really helpful. Subscribe is always an option. So here it is. I got this third and final coat of lacquer on the top of the desktop. 
I'm pretty excited about that because that means that I'm done with the stain and the lacquer part of this business. So I put this right over that hole right there. It's gonna be able to swing through. I don't care if there's a spacer there. I don't mind if it rubs wood. A little bit of spray with a WD. It's a little tight. I've got some snap and some push around here happening. That's probably good right there. I want to plug it in and make sure that it works. And will it handle the type of craziness that's reset, that's off? I think that's gonna do. I got my pre-drilled holes here for my hinges. Why do they insist upon ruining everybody's life and taking up all kinds of time by putting these stupid stickers on there that don't come off? You know what I'm saying? Hammer that like button. These boat tie down loops weren't quite big enough in the hole area, so I manufactured them a little bit bigger for bigger bolts to go through. After spring punching the holes in there, I did mount a board on the bottom to keep from blowing out the front of the desktop. Because I was using carriage bolts, I wanted the front facing of the desk when it was shut to be black and the inside to remain the steel color. So I spray painted the top black. Here's where the girth of the top header comes in handy. I'm going to put the eye screws in here in order to hold the weight of the actual desk drawbridge as it sinks down. And now that the carriage bolts are dry, I can add them on to the boat loops with some lock nuts. Or stoppers for the drawbridge when it goes up so it doesn't over close. And then epoxy them in. So let's chop these. I don't know if this is still good. It's been a while. Oh, it's pretty dry there. Oh, we're good. I did forget to add some stops from the drawbridge to keep it from over shutting. So I decided to epoxy these door stops in and I cut them at a 90 degree to keep them a little less visible when the door was open. It says five minutes dry time. I'm going to leave it like an hour. You guys, these stops are pretty much the last thing to do to build the actual cabin itself. This is functional. This thing is functional now, which is pretty exciting. If you like this kind of content, hammer that like button for me. Subscribe, not even an option. Hit that button. This I found off of Etsy. Oh, that's pretty. This is going to go on the top piece and stay there. This is going to go on the bottom of the desktop as it comes up. It will latch in and grab. One of my main concerns is that I put this on the front and this goes on the top. So I want to make sure there's enough grab friction on there to actually keep this in place because it will be fighting gravity. I mounted these here, gave it a little tester. I'm pretty happy with it. So it looks like I need about 3 16 inch gap between the catch plate and the actual latch. Good. Dive the thing is not that bad. Gonna, I'm gonna mark a little line right there. You right. 
and I know it's going to tear a little bit of the paint off of it. That's okay, because this is kind of rustic anyway. Oh, on the front face of it. Now these screws are obviously shorter to not go through the face of this thing. There, grabs it, pulls it a little bit. Loose. Grab, pull. Oh, we should be able to open it up with this. And we can. Looking pretty good. Now that that window latch is in there, it's time to get this thing up on the wall. It's pretty exciting, long time coming. It's taken me quite a bit to get this done because I had to pause, paint my entire house, and then I was able to get back to it. Wall panel. What I failed to show here was the strips that I put on the wall into the studs, and then this cabinet got mounted to those strips. And then I used the turnbuckles on the drawbridge in order to level the desk out once it was on the wall. If you enjoyed this, I hope you hit subscribe. What are you doing? If you watched it all the way, help the channel out, subscribe. This is another Cool Hand Ryan build. We'll see you on the next one.